Hi there folks, um, short video today, this is the uh, the crankshaft out of the Rover V8, the, uh, the little 3.5 which we dated now about 1972. Um, this crank has never been reground. Um, you can see this on camera. Those shells, that's, that's a big end, which is in very good condition. And that's one of the mains. A little bit scraped, but I think that's been rotated in storage, but they are both <coughs> standard size. So today I'm just going to give this crank a light polishing of the journals, just to uh, see if we can get rid of some of these marks, which you can see. Um, to actually feel across, there's no noticeable real grooves or raised areas. So hopefully a light polish should do it. Because I just want to lightly uh, take this surface off, what I'm going to be using uh, is some 2000 grit wet and dry. Um, some masking tape. An old boot lace. And some maintenance fluid. And what I'm going to do is actually uh, wrap the wet and dry around this big end, tape it up, and then use this lace to actually uh, polish the journal. So I shall get it taped up and we'll uh, see how it cleans up. So here we have the, uh, the wet and dry. What I'm going to do, it's got some uh, actually masking tape for uh, model making, something else I, I do when I have the time. Right, shall do. Place that around there. Right, and now I'm going to find the journal oil gallery. Where's it gone? There. I don't know if you can see this on camera because it's gone dark. Come on, wake up. Right, I'm going to use the oil galleries. to squirt some down into the uh, big end. Yep. And now, just bring that back round. We should be able to uh, polish the journal. I'm not saying this is the uh, the ultimate way to polish a crankshaft, but it is one that you can do at home. I would rather use a very slightly worn standard crank than one that's been remachined. So, what shall do? We'll have a little check on this in a in a moment and just see how it. Uh, how it looks. Well, that was a very light rubbing, and as you can see, see that cloth. We need to go a bit further yet. So let's wrap it back up. Right, let's just give it a bit more loop. Down. Oh, 
think we've done things. Nothing else that is good exercise. Take a look. Uh, that's looking a lot better. What I quite often do is just to unravel the wet and dry and just physically give it a, a finishing off stroke, shall we say. This crankshaft is as old as me. Probably in better condition to be fair. this up that's not looking too bad there are a few marks on it but I can live with those and that's not fully polished I will give it a, a, a final polish when I've gone through all the journals so next I'm going to do this main bearing which does have some marks on it as we can see and I'm going to use uh, the same method um, but this time I'm actually going to use some uh, 1200 grit wet and dry first. So let's get this one taped up. Right, that's that one taped up. Give it some juice. Spread that juice a bit first. I think I've got my tolerances a bit tight on this one. So this is the 1200 grit to start with, uh, the main bearing is looking a little bit more marked than the big ends. A little bit more juice. By the way, the, uh, the oil galleries in the Crankshaft, the old drillings, 
uh, are exceptionally clean. Which is always good to see. This engine definitely did not have any uh, sludging up issues. Right, we'll take a look at that, see how it's. Uh, how it looks. Some definite scarring. Have to do a bit more. Right, two thousand grit this time. A bit of lube. Thank you. exciting video in the world. That's not looking too bad. There are some score marks there. Let me just finish that one by hand. There we have it, folks. Um, I don't think it warrants re grinding it, but the measure up will be the telltale sign. There are some marks on them. But I don't think they're going to be of any detriment. At the end of the day, the engine build, okay, it might make some more power, but we're not talking top fuel drags to power. So, all I need to do now is clean up the other three big end bearings and the other three mains. So, while I do that, why don't you maybe, uh, if you're new to this, this is the first video you've seen, just check out where this crankshaft came from in the, uh, in the previous episodes. Right. Well guys, there we have it. That's all the journals, uh, all the journals done. 
I'm yet to uh, measure it, but I'd say it's probably within tolerances. Uh, they, they are some light score marks. I don't know if the camera's picking these up very well, but for a 1972 crank, still on standard size bearings, that is an exceptionally good one. Still need to clean out these uh, these oil passageways. I generally give the, the whole thing a clean before it's, uh, it's put to use. But just out of interest, I might take the one out of the dead Rover engine that I started with. Um, it's quite possible the crankshaft could be a good one. Uh, I might as well take it out and just compare it to this one. If it's better, I'll use it. If not, we'll go with this one. Well, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, liking, subscribing and all that jazz. We'll catch you soon, folks.